Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. Um, today we're going to be looking at testing your uh, Docker images and uh, kind of shell scripts, um, basically both together. Um, there's there's quite a big movement in the tech industry towards the whole kind of DevOps culture. You know, automating as much as you can, continuous uh, integration, continuous deployment pipelines, uh, which is all great. You know, it's very cool stuff. Um, but there's not as much chat about how to test these things. And obviously, the um, the testing story for the kind of infrastructure is a lot trickier than it is with you know your standard applications. Um, but I think there's definitely a way you can get started. There's definitely minimal tests you can do to ensure that your uh, infrastructure is set up, or at least that your scripts are doing what you uh, what you think they're doing. So that's what we're going to look at today. So hopefully this uh, this provides some sort of value. Um, yeah, hope you enjoy it. Cool. So um, first thing I'll do is I'll point you to what we're going to be using for the testing, which is uh, this Bats Core. Um, it's a framework for Bash uh, testing. The kind of layout is very similar to what you'll find in any kind of standard application. You have your test case, your naming, and then some sort of assertion. And um, these assertions are based on the kind of the Bash test command, which we'll which we'll have a look at. Um, setting it up is very very simple. You can do it straight from source. I just use Homebrew, so I've got it on my local machine. Uh, I'm working on a Mac just now. Um, and then yeah, we can look at the syntax etc. Um, just now, yeah. So. Let's just uh, go to IntelliJ. Great, so I've got here um, a basic application. When I say that, it means absolutely nothing other than a few files that I've created for this for this kind of tutorial. Um, typically, you'll find a Docker file, the root. I've commented everything out, but all this is essentially gonna do is install some sort of tools. Um, I'm just uh, inheriting from kind of bash. Uh, install some sort of tools. In this case, I've just chucked in Git. Doesn't really matter for this. For, uh, for this tutorial um, and then it's going to copy over some defined scripts that we've got in this case some sort of initialized script and it's going to run it um, so I've commented it out just now and I'll, I'll have these commented out just so we can start with the test I'm trying to get in the habit of you know starting with the test and then adding in the implementation uh, and the initialized script as well is commented out but all it's going to do for now is going to echo out some config into a config file um, at some repo um, in some directory sorry uh, and then it's just going to echo out this that successful um, yeah, so we're gonna basically write tests for those. Uh, so I've got bats installed locally. Let me just uh, show you that. Bats, yeah, so it shows there. Um, so that's where you kind of need to start with. Uh, and then we're gonna go, so I kind of split this up into two. We've got the test that's gonna actually test the initialized script. So we're gonna test that in um, whatever environment. In this case, I'm just gonna test it on my machine, but this is kind of something that your, um, for example, your your build environment might might pick up. Um, we're just going to test that it does what it says it's going to do. Things like is is that file created? Does it have the right content, etc.? Does it print out the right messages? And then we're going to have a quick test um, about our Docker image. So we're going to, you know, essentially in the Docker image, we're just going to test. You know, we've installed Git. Is it there? Does it exist? That's the kind of kind of little test. Very very simple, very small, but hopefully it will. You can see how it can kind of grow from there. Um, and there's been, you know, I've seen countless of times where you know uh, developers have accidentally changed the line or changed the permissions of a of a file and things are broken. And uh, sometimes if you don't have the kind of correct logging setup, etc., that that can be quite tough to to find off or for something that could be avoided with a few lines of tests. So hopefully this will this will help. So um, I've got a complete version on the side over here. So I'm going to be copying and pasting code again, so I don't take up too much time in the video. Hopefully, and um, yeah, I'll be explaining it as I go along. Um, so we're going to start off with an initialized script. Again, the scope of that script is essentially to create a config file. Um, and I've just, let's copy this over, essentially got three tests that I've, that I've kind of uh, had here. So let's walk, walk through that. Um, so first thing we're doing is we're loading in this test helper. Um, now I've got a few kind of utility methods there. We're not going to use them at first, so we'll ignore that and then we'll, we'll come back to it. Um, back to initialize test exactly, yeah. Um, just creating a reference here to the initialized script. When you run bats, it runs relative to um, where you are in the directory. So bats gives you a few kind of special variables that you can use. In this case, the current uh, the directory that the uh, bats file is in, and then a relative path from there to uh, the initialized script. Um, very first one is just checking that it's executable. So uh, most of the time, by default, if you create uh, a new shell script, and let's just check the permissions on those um, I do actually just ls minus a you can see that, that that test script is not executable so that's kind of a, a a very basic one obviously I could execute just by you know using shell or bash but um, we don't want we don't want that so 
very quick test that might save you either minutes or hours of, of fun um, which is basically uh, using the test keyword so and if I just show you the manual for this um, I just bring this up so I've just done man test to look at test there's two ways to write these expressions which is test and expression or in square brackets this basically returns true or false based off of some sort of expression um, if files exist if you know uh, if they're executable if they are of certain type etc the one that we're going to use is um, exists and executable if you've got a decent or a decent IDE as so I'm using IntelliJ here you can just auto complete any of these in this case file executable and we're just going to point it to um, the initialized script let me just copy and paste that paste that in here we go um, and it expects spaces at the start and the end and it expects double quotes here so that is essentially our first test we can just run that by doing bats and tests there we go very first test pass uh, it will look for all tests that uh, are suffixed with dot uh, bats and it will just run them so that's how that that starts um now at this point i'll just point you towards the the test helper so you saw me change this from a method earlier on this is just a way to show you that you can have functions etc um in an external file this is exactly the same um test i'm doing there but i'm just passing in the first parameter and it basically yeah it brings them in so we can just do that instead that we can just reuse, reuse code um, that doesn't work because I've not uh, I've not actually passed in the there we go try that again there we go um, yep so that's the, the initial test and then we can look at the other two tests again you can get familiar with it with the syntax so we're just making sure that it can create the file so we're just running the script um bats provide this run keyword to run um to run scripts or commands so we're just running the script we're passing in a temp directory uh, i'll show you where that comes from in a minute we're checking that that file exists so this should be created inside the temp directory and then we're checking the the output of the file obviously this you know isn't something you want to have in kind of production you want to use environment variables you want to hide things away but this is just kind of for for the test um yeah and bats has the concept of setup and teardown which um you should be quite familiar with from application um, test frameworks and all we're doing here is we're setting up um the directory and um, this is one of those special variables that bats provides because you have temp directory to work with so we're creating a directory in there we're just making it before each test and then we're just removing it once uh, the test is done so yeah that's exporting into environment variable which is then being used here uh, and the final test yeah it's just asserting that the status is equal to zero and that the output is successful so if we run these tests oop, they're going to fail because i've not actually uh, uncommented out the code again so if i uncomment this that's what we we essentially hope should happen run those there we go so the tests are doing what we want them to do um and it's finding the file uh, great perfect so next we're going to move on to the docker test so I want the docker file um, if I build it uh, and try to run it I want git in this case to be installed on it that's 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 what I want to test out so this is what the test that we're going to write so this is what the docker test looks like so it's got its own setup and a teardown uh, and in fact if I, if I bring this down I like to have the setup and teardown on the top just so we can see what it's doing but if I bring it down it just shows kind of the order of execution so first it before the test it's going to set up the docker um, image it's, going to, it's just going to hit build and it's giving it a tag of test and um, this is just pointing to the, the docker file um, once we have that built we're going to run the docker image um, now the docker image just extends from bash so we can just pass a command to run so in this case we're, we're literally hitting the git version uh, and we essentially expect out of that um, a success code so if it fails or if it doesn't have it it's going to obviously fail um, you can know again we're, we're giving this a name we're giving it a tag because in the teardown we want to make sure that we remove the container and we remove the uh, the image so that we can uh, run the tests again um, if i go and uncomment this docker file oops, um, do we do? and let's just so we've got the docker file like this um, we're going to do it without git just to make sure that it's kind of the test working but it is failing uh, so let's do that you could do directly docker bats there we go get installed we'll do a bit of work you can see that it's it's, it's failed there um if we uncomment that and we run the exact same test 
there we go so that's now all of our tests passing that's it for this tutorial i don't want to go into much more detail um, hopefully that's been a bit useful to you guys hopefully it's provided kind of a bit of insight how you can kind of see this growing the final thing i would point you to is in the uh, bats core uh, kind of website slash documentation if you go to their support section um they've got other projects that use bats in their github repo as well they've got their own tests which are worth looking at um, but yeah if you look at you know the projects using bat um using bats sorry you can see a few big names uh, ansible you can see docker and uh, go and um, github git so there's a few few kind of big players there and you can go in and have a look at how they're how they're using it and how they how they do things um so yeah i think that's everything for me i uh, hope you have a good day and hope this was useful